Well, it's that time again, ladies and gentlemen. Neblime and I are here to cast some lower qualification matches. The last two series for Gauntlet B, of course, we're casting this after battlements have already been played and the throne room stage is already well underway, but it's important to cast these for posterity's sake to chronicle the journey taken by those who managed to get here and also the almost, the second placers, the silver medalists, the guys who got there. So we already know the outcome of this match, of course, uh, but it will be the Beaver 99's Terran versus Benno's Protoss. And what do you think, Neblime? For the sake of the viewer who might not know and just clicked on this out of nowhere, should we just not say who actually got in and just if you know, you know? How do you think we'll go about this? Yeah, of course, you've got to try not to. I was wondering if you're going to tell the people the truth, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. About, about when this was casted, you know, if you're going to pretend like, oh, we don't know who could win. But yes, <laughs> we, we do know the outcome, but we can we can keep that under wraps. Sure. Uh, I mean, any, any match is a match, right? Anyone can win. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I think there's something to be said for even though, you know, I'm the kind of guy who, if the story is ruined a bit by the spoiler, then maybe it wasn't that good. Because the journey is, huh. in some ways, just as important as that destination. So I oh, say okay. we'll go for that. I say we'll go for that. We uh, are going to be kicking things off here on no map less than Titan Forge. And if you give me a moment, I'll even dig out the uh, pick ban. It was some time ago now. but Always important to overanalyze that. Yes, yes, of course. So I will uh, go ahead and paste it to you, Neblime, and read it off to our lovely audience. But uh, we have, of course, none other than Axiom, Derelict, Germination, Impetus, and Titan Forge as the maps that are available to us. You see them on your screen here. The bands were kind of interesting. Benno Band Sideshow, which is a map that you think is obviously beneficial for Protoss versus Terran. Uh, and then uh, after Beaver Band, Fata Morgana, which is an understandable one, Benno Band The Purgatory. So isn't that interesting? Yeah, I wonder how deeply these were fought through. You know, sometimes you see these picks and you think, well, you know, did they really think about it ahead of time? Right. Yeah. Maybe they did. Maybe they know something we don't. That's right. Maybe they've gotten some practice. Now, it's worth noting that uh, the last time these two met was in Gauntlet A on the lower bracket, and Benno Ooh. eliminated the Beaver 99 two to one. But the 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 one game Beaver won was very easily decided. Like it would, I think it was like ten minutes or something. And the two that Benno won were like forty minute brawls. It was really to the edge of the seat. So I don't know what to expect out of this matchup, but I'm expecting at least a little bit of that. Uh, shall we get started on Titan Forge then? Let's do it. Let's do it. We are getting right into things. We got Benno in the top left, the Beaver 99 in the bottom left. And uh, yeah, I guess this was played at local time that was a little bit late for Benno, but it was the weekend. It was Friday night slash uh, Saturday morning. So he was able to stay up for it and he was happy to. He had just uh, 2 0'd in Noslix's Zerg. And you've seen Ooh. in Noslix a little bit. So you know that he can be a little bit of a. Uh, like a, a cheeky, cheesy type of player, but not enough for Benno, apparently. Benno just walked right through him. Yeah, you know, Zerg doesn't lend itself to that too much, actually. I feel like most things Zerg does, you have to get, like, a bunch of workers first and sort of be doing it off the back of a strong economy. Like, say you're running into a whole bunch of NAFs. They cost a lot. you gotta mm -hmm. you got to build up quite a bit first. Uh, whereas the other two races, they can just kind of build, like, a certain building and suddenly start sending a certain unit at you, you know? Uh, speaking of, Benno just sending that early scout, but I'd be very surprised if he does anything crazy because he is just the rock solid Dracodin man That's over right. here. He's getting his gateway. There it is. There uh, it is. But I guess he just really wants to see. And look at that. It might pay off because that fork was in odd position. I wonder if he was going to like lift that down. I guess that wouldn't really give you any benefit. I don't know. It's just a weird spot for the Fulcrum. Yeah, the Beaver is notorious for placing his factories and not, I don't mean Fulcrum, I mean any production structure that he has. He, his first one is always off to like some weird side. I don't know what the psychology is. Uh, obviously there's a game that you and I will both have known, Neblime, where he was on Axiom and he put his second one like behind the mineral line and stuff. It's just, it's curious. Yes that uh, he does things like that. but And sometimes it can pay off, but obviously Benno scouts it, so no mind games here. Well, I wonder if, uh, you know, it makes the later game base layout easier, mm -hmm. uh, if like, he's sort of working to a plan. Because, you know, I know in Brute War that sometimes your first building is like, well, why would you put it in that random spot? But you have to put it there because you have this like whole elaborate base setup you're going to replicate. Well, speaking of... I think Benno was planning on adding something here, but it's not a gateway because he's already at 200 minerals. It's a lattice. What? He's doing something Benno? different. Oh my God, he's evolving. That's crazy. Oh my God, Beaver's in trouble because like the, the static, unchanging, untouched by the, the ravages of time Benno was enough for him last time. But now Benno is even bringing something new to the table. I don't know, man, I'm scared. Yeah, that's very bizarre. It's going to be he's a two fulcrum 
with some vultures. Of course, getting tickled here by the Dracodon. I suppose if you don't lose it, it's an okay poke. Just confirming Dracodon's unit he's making. Uh, although, I wonder if he's hugged the right side, if he could have run in and checked for a Nexus, because he really wants to know that here. Right, yeah, he does want to see what his opponent is doing. I mean, he saw the scribe positioned here, but that could be a deep mind game. Do you expect that from Benno? No, but do you expect the lattice? No, also. Yeah. Well, gonna... you've got to treat every opponent like they could do anything, right? Otherwise, that's how you get blindsided. And if Benno really wants to win this series and get his way into Acropolis, he's going to bring some different stuff. Now, it's going to be a vassal. It is only vultures so far, so if he mm. runs across and harasses, that could be really annoying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you force, like, a Cyclops or a Goliath or something, and, you know, those are fine to have anyway, but... Uh, obviously you'd prefer the Ooh. Goliath if you want. It's just, do you want to spend that much money early on versus this? Beaver's keeping his money very low. Benno not the same, but he's probably thinking about expanding as he goes over 400 there, almost uh, over 500 for a moment. I like this play from both players, honestly, because Beaver looks like he wants to try and take that ramp from the very beginning and not give it up, which is a very strong strategy. But at the same time, Benno is just kind of countering him here with this vassal. But hang on, he's just scouting. He's yes. never going to harass him. He's going for Sims. Oh, hang on. Watch this going in. This is a mistake from Beaver. He does not want to trade these off right now. He's trying to hold this clip. He's going to get a Dracon and maybe a second one. But I still actually don't think he wanted to do this. Sim coming down. Can it stay alive? And Vultures will kill it fairly quickly. He just retreats to the high ground. Oh, he's going to get a clone out of it after all. Ah, not even killing the scribe at the end of it either. A little bit awkward for yeah. the vulture control. You know, money-wise, it wasn't that bad, but like I said, he really wants to hold that position. He went to the trouble of putting the mines there. I would love it if he just maintained his force and maintained that map control, because it could be really devastating on this map. Uh, but now that he's traded off, I feel like Beto has a pretty good window to come out here and reclaim the ramp. Yeah, he certainly can. And, uh, you know, there's four more coming. We'll see. I, they can easily focus down the uh, Dracon in there, but a lot of overkill on that last one. They're going to try to go after the Sims now, but at what cost? At what cost, Nebline? you got to remember, right? A Sim costs the exact same as a Vulture, and one-to-one, -one, I think they're slightly better, so it's really not that good for Beaver here. I mean, he's keeping the enemy army count down. I don't know if he has a, a reason for that. Uh, and I can't quite see, unfortunately, the new map if he's expanding your name on Discord is over the top of that. Is he got a natural? <laughs> no, it is not. All right, That's yeah. Funny. Oh, wow, we're going at four Fulcrum. Mm. Mm -hmm. so this is the thing. If you want to overwhelm your opponent with, like, some mass unit play like this, again, I don't think trading off is what you want to do. I think you want to just come into overwhelming force all of a sudden, uh, especially because every time Benno's, like, losing units, he'll be aware that he needs to maintain a defensive posture. If yep. Benno came out, tried to take the ramp, and hit, like, got hit by a mine, and you take out, like, three or four units that way, that would be a great start to your sort of all-in attack here. But we have Goliaths coming up. That... Vassal's still at large. Yeah, and scouts four fulcrums in the treasury. So what are you what yeah. are you worried about here from Benno? You know what's really up. Great yeah, yeah. And honestly, if you just get like a single Angram or let's say a Warden on either side on the high ground, there's no way like mech is coming in here. It's going to be too painful. Yeah, I'd love to see maybe like a gateway on the front or maybe like off to this side. So you funnel your enemy in through this area, which is favoring That's all the good. stuff. You got to be careful against Goliaths, though, because they will siege that down. Yeah, yeah. Fair. And you can't reposition your structures nearly as well. So, I guess what you could do is you could put a bunch of pylons and then just move them with your envoy after you. Know? Big brain. Well, that's an idea. Well, you know, in Brood War, we see pylons thrown out a lot and they still cost more in that even. So, yeah, you know, we probably don't see enough pylon spam in this matchup. Uh, Shambler said that uh, the pylon walls he thinks cost a bit too much to quite be useful, but I don't know. I feel like there's still situations where they'd probably be good. Yeah, you um, mostly just want to shape the enemy's position, I think, right? You know, you mm -hmm. got all the range advantage in this matchup for now until the Goliaths start coming out. And they are coming well, out, but it's mostly Vultures. Yeah, Beaver's plan's still working, though, even though he lost some units earlier. He's still maintaining this ramp, right? And at the end of the day, if the game goes longer and longer, Benno's going to have to do something about that. But he's coming in again. Mm -hmm. Beaver cannot wait. He's out for blood here. This is a scary army, and, you know, Benno's not really in position here. Okay, he's going to sort of reorient. Oh, a zealot coming out is going to be huge here. In fact, he just sees it and he runs back. <laughs> <laughs> Intimidated by the Chad posture of the zealot. Yeah, I mean, he could have focused that down. He's got a matador, so that's a unit that we don't see too often. Glad that we get to pop it in here for a moment. I mean, it'd be very effective against that zealot. Uh, it struggles against most other things because it's just a bit slow and gets picked off by range pretty easily. But against zealots and other melee stuff, it's very effective if you deploy it in the front line. Then Envoy coming up, by the way. So I don't know if Beto's going to go for harassment. Uh, that three zealot drop could be coming in. Did he cancel it or did he finish it? Where'd it go? There right it is. Right here in the middle, yeah. Um, and also going for an ardent behind it all, so... I wonder if sim drops are good if you sort of, like, just set up in the opponent's space and start replicating. I don't know. Shall I tell you something scary? I'm mm. pretty sure there are only one space and the Envoy has ten. No, what? That's crazy. I think. Hold on. 
Yeah, transport space one. There you go. Oh so my god! You can but fit then, ten if of you them. put ten of them in there, that's like twelve hundred minerals. That's pretty <laughs> scary if you lose that. <laughs> yeah. Witness I spotting. I want to see it though. Anchor yeah. on the on the high ground, of course. Classic move. And he sees it. What Listen, going to do about it? Beaver's been behind it economically speaking for a very long time, but he's starting to get his a second quarry. He can maybe think about a third base behind this, but we'll see. Yeah, I good. think being out behind like this is okay as long as he maintains this commanding map position because in a longer game, uh, Benno's not going to be able to get above three bases and even the third base is highly questionable as long as Beaver's on the map. Is he going to give away his position out here? Okay, you don't want to let your opponent know you're going for that over yes. but he does go back. Um, I would like to see some mines on the right from Beaver. He's got a couple on the left. I think you need to emphasize the side paths a little bit more here because it's quite hard for Protoss to bust the ramp so you can commit a little bit more to stop getting flanked. That's the difficulty of doing this contain strategy. You've got to watch the side paths. Oh my god. Oh my god. Seven Sims and a Zealot. Let's see what that drop can do. He's also grabbing an Akantor, which I thought would be actually what he's going to plan to drop, but he made the Envoy way too fast, so he wants to make use of it. Akantor and Sim. That'd be pretty good. Hmm, there you go. But not today. How big is an Akantor? Is it six? Uh, I believe so, yeah. So you'd have the ability to get four. Oh, snipe before you can throw down the Nexus. That'll be delaying the, the third problem. base. Yeah. Honestly, it's a good thing he didn't throw down the Nexus, though, because I think Terran could still just go over there and deny it, but here comes that drop, or not. Oh, here it comes. Oh, here it is. Oh my god, how fast is it going to unload, though? This ain't no Trojan, it takes a while to get this stuff out. <laughs> He's going to lose the Envoy, it looks No, he like. lost the Zealot! No way! Oh, he gets oh. it out at the very end. Oh, wow. Well planned. I thought All for planned. sure that was going to be over. Very fast uh, reaction here from Beaver, who sends off a good yeah. significant chunk of his forces, but he does pull the uh, workers. Oh, no, no he's going to start cloning. It. You don't no, want to do that. They're oh, cloning. Wait, hang on. No, wait. The, on. the forces are back, though, actually. He's going to kill it, it looks like. No. Uh, so really no. good response from Beaver. No, he's cloning it. Oh, no. There's going to oh, be crap. three of them. There's oh, my God. How did it end up as three? Oh, no. Okay, these ones will get cleaned up, probably. <laughs> yeah, just fine. Sooner or later, one Eventually. blackjack doing its best. Man, this did do a lot of damage, though. Oh, my God. Okay, well, you consider the mineral investment from Benno, actually. It's not that bad for Terran. And he did have a very swift response there. I love that he only sent part of his forces back as well, maintaining his hold on the map here. Uh, really nicely done. But now, Benno, with an Architect and an Akantor, I feel like he could probably take this ramp out with some good micro. Will he commit to the attack? We know Benno can be a bit timid. Oh, man, I love that Matador in the middle there. It's going to stop any Zealots causing trouble. Yep, Once nice and deployed. Oh, no. Mm. Well, hey, it's oh, saved. It's saved. It's fine. Hmm. Love to see Phalanxes here. Oh, he is building one, I was going to say. Like, that's something we have now that could be very deadly in this situation. Repulture. Yeah, it, it escaped yeah. the death from the Akantor, only to run directly into the main enemy army. But hey, it I gets mean, a little bit of scary. Way, that's just denying your opponent the satisfaction of killing it themselves. Like, no, I'm going to be the one who gets it killed. Yes, that's right. It's sort of like in TVT, where you see all the Terran players just rallying their workers into each other. <laughs> All right, well, as we can see, uh, Terran catching up pretty well in workers here with those quarries, and he's getting his third as well. Uh, it's going to be floating over. So he's going to be pretty even on economy here, and that's the thing. Benno has to make something happen. It looks like he has decided this moment, and he's going to sneak up on around the side. No mm -hmm. mines were placed there. A critical error from Beaver, to be honest. Now he has to fight this army more on even terms. That uh, witness there doing a great job. Yep. You don't want to go in here. Well, here it comes, oh, right? He's deployed the one phalanx. His uh, matador is very out much out of position, yeah. Yeah. They can't even shoot, they're just looking at the zealots forlornly. <laughs> like, hey, could you come over here, please? Second phalanx moving up. Now flanking all the way around, using this extra real mm. estate from the new version of the map. Imagine if he had mines all in that area, it'd be a bit of a nightmare for Protoss, but as is, he can run around free, and Beaver yet to come up with a response, actually. His army's still sitting in the contained position, he needs to move to counter this army. If it shows up in his natural or something like that, he's going to be in a world of hurt here. Yep, he's realized he's also out of Vespin and has a lot of a mineral bank, so he's going to start adding a little bit of ma uh, bio, maybe just for the purposes of spending down some of those minerals. Oh man, he's taking the high ground. An architect there could cut off reinforcements really effectively. That's right. So it seems this Akantor uh, envoy just sort of tallying along, just like, hey, whatever the architect goes, I go too. And I think maybe Beaver's thinking oh. about it too. He's just peeled one yeah. unit off and he's now realized I'm being flanked. Uh oh. All right. About to get attacked from both sides. Is that what Benno intends here? He could crush this uh, forward setup if he hits it simultaneously with his reinforcements. Well, some of them were dragged away for just a moment. A couple of wardens. He does get that third up. If nothing else, this move has accomplished that, that uh, Beaver's yes. not sending him a vultures or anything over there. Uh, 
And yeah, what does Bieber have at home? His money's spiking up way too high. He's not really been able to produce a reinforcing army, whereas Benno has done a beautiful job of doing that while moving his army around in a very threatening posture. Bieber's just going to pull the trigger. He's saying, I, I choose how I die. Yes, One I guess so. Of glory. Well, here's the problem in. is that the consistent production out of Benno here feels like maybe it's going to be way too much for this force to get cleaned up. And now the sandwich coming in, you got some mine attack action, but it's not nearly enough. And it feels like maybe Beaver just didn't arrive into this game very nicely, right? Now Benno's economy is spiking up, but the Beaver's is way out of control. Look, man, he killed more value of that than of any army, so he's doing all right here. Now look at the army count, 38 to 6, sorry, 45 to 9. It, it's updating too fast for me, man. <laughs> Wait, why is it alternating between two numbers? That's weird. Oh, I was holding Did alt. Did you see that? That's, that was, oh, what that happens muscle. when you do that? What does that it mean? Shows, it shows you the uh, factoring in what's queued up. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So that's just me all tapping to, really quickly to check something like that. Yeah, you can just you can always blame my others, dude. All right, Beaver back in his base now. He's going to have to give up that third if Benno moves over there. Uh, all he can do for now is turtle a bit and try and come out later with a bigger force. He's going to build up the phalanx count, but if the architects are on the high ground there, I mean, the shoe's on the other foot now, how is Terran ever going to get up there yeah. without tier two? Yep. And, uh, you know, this is probably, this is honestly, I don't think I've seen Beaver do this mistake that often of the whole, like, floating a lot of minerals thing. He's trying to correct it by jumping straight up to 600 Vespines so he can tech up, and we'll see how fast he is on that because he is going to achieve that. He's also added, you know, double Palladium and going for double Vestry, so he's going to try to do, like, Goliath, Phalanx, Cleric as a general move, and now his Atlas comes down. So we're feeling pretty good about the, uh, you know, the fact that we've, you know, if we're from Benno's point of view, We've delayed the attack timing just now. We just spotted it as well. He's only now getting his Atlas, and it's almost 14 minutes into the game. A far cry from, like, Top Ramen's six-minute Atlas timing that he sometimes does, right? So, mm, Yeah. Look, I, I like the concept, though. Oh, well, hang on. Beto coming in here is going to run right into the teeth. The There's the Akantor. The nice. Army. Yeah. Big drop but there. But these Dracodons are getting absolutely splatted while this is going on. The Akantor is getting that shot from the high ground, but only to a Vulture. The Phalanx stack is very vulnerable to a drop right now. Oh. Is he going to pick that Akantor up again? No, it dies. Is he going to hold? It's just enough, I think, from Benno to break through an inefficient attack, but a victorious one after all. And yeah, I mean, what can Beaver field here in, in quick enough time, right? His Fulcrums aren't even producing anything right now. And even if they were, I don't think they'd be able to get anything done here. So the Beaver calls GG, and that will be Benno taking the initial advantage up 1-0 to zero in the series. And that was kind of a puzzling one. I had a little bit of a head scratcher. And, uh, you know, thankfully yeah. it's a best of five. So, you know, if you end up making mistakes like not being able to spend your minerals in the way that the beaver was or, you know, like the un not unloading the acant or whatever, like if the level of play is just a little bit on the low side, then, uh, you know, you can just say, okay, well, let me shake that off and move in. There's still plenty of play here. But I will say the beaver a little bit. Um, I was surprised at how, like, uh, off that was. And that was his pick, right? So... Uh, or sorry, I believe that was that Benno's pick. I can't remember. No, it looks uh, like it was the Beaver's too, pick. Yeah, so the Beaver ninety nine yeah, picked that. I one. thought it was. So uh, look, he has had a solid concept here going for that contain, but I feel mm. like he like panicked. Like that army in the rear areas caused a breakdown mm. of morale, yeah. and so he's just like, oh, we got to go get him now. And that was a disaster. I mean, he probably would have lost that forward army, but it wouldn't have been as inefficient if he didn't charge into the jaws of the Brutus right. army there. And Benno, you know, you got to give it to him for really nice army movement, also deci decisive uh, decision to attack there. Yep. And the other thing I'll point out is that we get the Zerg victory scream because that apparently the game thinks that neither the Terran nor the Protoss won that game. So Zerg always wins. That's right. Zerg always wins. We'll jump on <laughs> in to the second round here as soon as I find the folder. We are going to Impetus of so the Beaver 99. Selecting that, he will be spawning in the top right of the map and Benno in the bottom left. Now, this is a map it that Benno likes me. to veto a lot. So I just wanted to point That's that out. That's so strange to me. I would have thought it's very good for Protoss because uh, against Terran, or I mean, just Terran in general likes narrow areas because they go to their range stuff. Uh, I suppose with the architect play, maybe it's a different matter, but I don't know. Beaver not really one to go for much bio here, so I wouldn't have thought he would like such open areas. It's just a fairly open map, especially the third. is going to be very, very difficult to defend. Definitely the case. We will see a fulcrum opener yet again from the Beaver, it looks like, since he has switched off to harvesting gas with two workers early on, so that indicates the timing. Usually when you see one, it's like stockade into quarry. I love that we're getting like actually pretty steady builds these days. It's kind of interesting. Oh, it will be a stockade. So I guess it is stockade into quarry after all. But, oh. you know, we're getting like uh, little tells like that, you know, like I think what shows um, some degree of mastery is when you watch like a streamer or a caster or whatever. And they they see like 
you know, one worker movement differently. And then they're like, oh, that's this build. And it's like, you know, like, it's cool to get to that point a little bit anyway. Uh, obviously, it would be yeah, cooler I if it actually was a full crew, but, you know. <laughs> I remember in StarCraft 2, like, coming up the ramp, and I'm like, ah, oh, I see. His barracks is in that position. He's going to Port Banshee. It's like, okay, yeah, that's that's uh, that's fun to try and delve into mm. that kind of thing. Right, right. Uh, look, these players maybe not quite at that point, but we do see a pattern for Terran recently where mm. they either go for the, like, one production structure in the quarry right away, or they go for multiple production structures and pressure, they get the expansion, and then go double quarry. Uh, which, you know, makes a lot of sense. Either they're sort of just turtling and getting their economy up, or they're going to put the pressure and get the economy later. Uh, and so far, BV going with the former option. Once again, Drakkenen coming out. They're not really going to deviate from that. Why would you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, do you reckon that the uh, the Lattice for the early scout helped him out that much in that last game? I feel like it was probably pretty useful. Maybe he'll go for it again. Well, I would say extremely. Because um, he was quite conservative with his army, knowing that his opponent had made all these altars and stuff. And like I was saying, if he had moved up and lost like three or four units to the mines hitting them, uh, trying to go up that ramp, it would have been a disaster. Um, so I think it was really important. I would have liked to see him make more vassals and harass more, though. Oh, we've got a double stockade situation here as the beaver finishes up his quarry. We'll see if those vassals come into the picture here for more than just a well, scout. As it will be a I lot was of saying Beaver wouldn't go bio, but look at this. I was dead wrong. Maybe that's why he picked this map. It do be lagging, though. It do be lagging. That's your internet oh, cosmically man. wrapping around and kind of traveling. <laughs> Maybe I was watching this game. You don't know. Oh, um, no. <laughs> so that one probe behind enemy lines, a scribe, should I say, he's uh, on a secret mission. Do you think he thinks he's making it home? What did they tell him when they sent him in here? I think they said, hey, check out what your enemies got. And then the beaver said, I got a lot of Mavericks. but uh, mm, Enough to ward off a Drakadin anyway. Yeah, he's, that's just right. there. he's just there. He's oh, just I thought they were oh. friends. Oh. He, he's sick him, boy. The paint. He's going he's gonna to pay for that. He's that's right. Him down. He's going to say, hey, don't do that. That's right. You did two damage to my ministry, dude. I got to repair that now. How many minerals is that? Like one mineral? It should be like 0 0.01, but we don't do fractions in this game. <laughs> Caught on camera. Well, I mentioned that if you know you're sitting there like, ah, oh, yes, I have 154.76 minerals, <laughs> yeah. and now I only have 0.75 because I had to repair that. My build's off. Yeah, ruined. Who's the Who's the player? Is it the? I think he's a Protoss player in ASL who does that. His like his worker moves like one pixel to the left that he doesn't want it to for optimization purposes, and he like moves around in his chair like a thrashing infant. He's oh, you're talking about mini, I assume. Probably, yeah, yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> I mean, he's not he's not as fragile a player, but when he when he's tilted, he sure is tilted. Yes, yeah, no, like it, he actually plays just fine after that, but like he viscerally reacts very. Yeah. Ex extra, yeah. That's well, awesome. look, this is the one thing I always remember is that game where he, like, uh, flew his Reaver out on Sparkle and his opponent had a Corsair and he, like, <laughs> dropped it on the island and the shuttle died and it was just trapped there and he lost. <laughs> he was so mad about that. <laughs> like, I know Mini is literally, like, one in ASL, but anytime anyone mentions him, like, did you know that it happened once? Like, <laughs> it's never going to live that down. Double Cyprian. Okay, well, I was talking about the Cyprians in other games, uh, and the things, they they are a unit that can test the dragons. If all you have is Mavericks, you're kind of screwed, or oh, that vassal not going to last this long this time, or is it? Oh, back and forth, back and forth. He's got a Here's decent number of Mavericks, you know? And the dragons yeah, are nowhere to be seen. Yeah, all they do, all they do is just, like, buy time against dragons. They can't yeah. really win a fight against them, because the dragons will just kite them. If you have some way of, like, flanking or surrounding or something, but the dragons can't get away, of course, they'll absolutely demolish them if the dragon is just standing there and taking it. Yeah. But if they're kiting even a little bit, the mavericks are just, like, fodder. So, what are they fodder for? One option is Cyprians, but I'm not a big fan because you need a lot of them to really contest Drakkenans, and they're so fragile that even if you have the number you need, if they can start getting whittled down really fast... Well, looking at Beaver's bank here, I'm thinking that he's going to be going for a pretty fast uh, uh, atlas. And so the Cyprians here are just going to staff these two anchors, and then he's going to use them as insurance. Because he had almost 400 before the quarry and the second round of Cyprians. That might be pretty much all he's thinking right now, is using them for static I think, defense. I think I made this joke before, but like, what year is it? We're back on Repulsion. He's getting <laughs> the Cyprian bunkers yes. and rushing tier two on two bases get those down though the protoss army is on its way i'm really not a fan of making the anchors in the base when your expansion is already down like he does see it coming though so he knows there's a sense of urgency here the vassal also sees how poorly positioned the terror defenses are he really needs to get this army down the low ground beaver mm. kind of slacking here okay finally moves down yeah Give he doesn't have those garrison yet so he will i think in time i guess one of them yeah 
Hey, the watchdog coming on in here and seeing that Very there nice. is indeed an expansion. Worker counts he's are actually in name. favor of the Terran right now. Oh, he's not going to make it, is he? Oh. Yeah. Well, the units moved away, so actually he'll have a little bit of time to burn down. And in his dying he's moments, come in. I'm imagining the guy who spins around in that turret is like the guy who's piloting it as well. So he's like... Well, at least when you lift off, you get to stop spinning, right? That's, that's, that's right. the key thing. Yeah. You're, you're praying to be used as a scout, even though you know yeah. it'll be a swift to death. Because at least then you're not Sharon spinning. It might forever. be worth it here just to deny that witness, man. But he is going to get that Atlas in just a minute, it looks like. Yeah, he's got the cash. Yeah, we've been thinking a lot about the sort of balance of what Terrans do with their early money. And some of them do like to go straight up to tier two pretty fast. And we are going to see that sub seven minute Atlas, which is still pretty fast, all things considered. There it goes. Well, as you know, when I first started, I was trying to do stuff like this because, uh, well, a lot of my opponents weren't macroing very well, so I thought if I just hold out and play a longer game, it's pretty effective, and you might as well go tier two if you're just turtling, right? Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think it's probably usually better to play with a more, like, pressuring style, especially with bio. Uh, I think you want to take key positions of the map, basically. This map doesn't really lend itself to it. And I will say, it's going to be very hard for Protoss to do any form of aggression with this just massive maverick horde ready to yes. counterattack. Yeah. I almost wish it, uh, or feel like it would be really good to get these Mavericks out of the base and onto the map somewhere because you can do things like deny the third, Ooh, scout. watchdog scouting because this Mason was never caught. You can just continuously produce them. Maybe the guy inside the turret is actually like the like one of the spare toys that the Mason plays with in his spare time and he like puts <laughs> it in there after he finishes building it, you know? Ralph. Well, I mean, it's if the if Mavericks are supposed to be like convicts being punished, the guy in the turret must have been like worse than whatever the Mavericks did, right? <laughs> yeah, that's like Genghis Khan in another life. Six Ooh. simulacra and a zealot. Now the, the Mavericks can deal with this easily, but they need to be in position. It looks like he was thinking about moving out or at least moving around is yeah. natural at this time. The oh, Cyprian's a very okay. good unit against Sims as well. Well, the Envoy got tackled by the Watchdog a little bit there, and oh. it looks like maybe that'll be enough. I don't think Beaver noticed because his camera wasn't in position. But uh, Benno thinks he did, right? All right, he's mad cap time. He's getting those captaincies. What's he spending the gas on? Is it just going to be more and more Cyprians? He's got three vestries, by the way. Yeah. So it's going to be heavy clerics and madcaps. That's all well and good for minerals, but you've got to do something with this gas. We'd love to see Gorgons supporting this. It would really deal with the units that madcaps struggle with, like architects and cantors. It'd That's be right. great for picking those off. Yeah, and we do have the Arden Authority out, as well as three more gateways coming. So it's going to no be a total of five. There. Watch. Yeah, I'm just assuming it's going to be Ardent from Benno, because I yeah. mean, it's Benno. Of course, yeah, yeah. Well, having four captaincies here, as well as he's going to add a fulcrum. Oh, no, that's a cancel. Ooh, Maybe he wants a mantle he, instead. Gotcha, Pernogo. You were yeah, wrong. He's not so, adding a oh, fulcrum. He's adding... He's starport. Okay. So maybe he will Okay, be is it going to be the Gorgons? They looks like he's not positioning for add-ons. I think this would be a great move. Or, or maybe he is. I thought he was going to build another <laughs> one on the left. Yeah, I know. He got you two, but, Nevlon. But this witness seeing everything, it walked past the detection just a little bit, but it's still there. It sees that tier two is up and all this other stuff. Man, if you know it's going to be big madcaps, what do you go for? Do you just double down on architects, I wonder? That's where I think you go into that mass Acantor play, because if you, I still think macro mm. Acantor, like seriously having like 10 Acantors is just, I don't even know what yeah, you it's do. Strong. <laughs> it's strong, but he saw the starports, right? Yeah. So he knows that's going to be an issue. Yeah, the architects can't shoot air anymore, so that won't be a possibility either for that. And the Acantor certainly can't either, so yep. you've got to come up with something else here. Well, we do have a treasury established at multiple locations now, 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock, both being grabbed here by the beaver as he uh, schedules a couple more workers to depart. Uh, those bases will be very open to attack. They're very much unlike the the natural here, but maybe we'll, as they get established, we might see a couple sentinels be put up at each location that might allow the beaver to ward off any would-be attackers. We do have some wyverns. Okay, we're going to see some uh -huh. wyverns instead. Interesting. I suppose they're going to fulfill a similar role as the gorgons. I just don't think they're as good at it because units you know, can obviously escape them. And in fact, they're not as good at killing like armored units like the architect as easily. Mm. Uh, also, they got to get through all the rest of the chaff, the right? So. Yeah, exactly. And Argosy is on the way here. Uh, and that's obviously going to be pretty good against any kind of wyverns, any oh, yeah. that comes out of that. Now, Beaver going to try and take a fight here. His army is numerically superior, but I don't know if that means much when a lot of those numbers are mavericks. Honestly, I feel like it's just a maverick sacrifice to the gods, but we'll see how it goes. Well, the Cyprian also on the front line, trying to do right by its kind, and look at that, he stays alive in everything. Shame in keeping some units alive. Yeah, okay, thin the herd of the zealots, and, uh, you know, going to well, go ahead and continue to take some map pressure. 
This is allowing Beaver to secure that fourth, and he can get Sentinels at both locations, possibly turrets as well. I'm going to get that ready. Uh, and continue to macro that tier 2 stuff. Benno falling back into quite a narrow location. This might be a mistake. Uh, against Madcaps, you kind of got to think like a Zerg and worry about the surface area, though. He's got three Envoys, though. If he could somehow get three Acantors dropped into yep. the middle of that, it would do insane damage. Yeah, and that's what he's going for. The third Acantor out, he's going to go ahead and load it up. And now we've got quite a deadly kind of drop. Maybe he wants to go we ahead and try seen. to unload directly on him. We have seen that Benno's uh, Acantor micro is pretty damn good. Uh, even if we might approach him in other areas, you can't really hit him for that. So that could definitely be a play, but the Wyverns are building up secretly. He's yes. going to do the good old, like, you know, 10 Wyverns suddenly flying past all your bases, deleting everything. And I mean, so far with his army keeping Benno at arm's length, I think that's going to work quite well. Well, a bit of a mistake to not have the Shaman on deployment, just in case you can snipe witnesses errantly, mm. you know, definitely something that helps the, uh, Ooh, he's ready. <laughs> is going to go ahead and crawl on forward. Ooh. And the witness really makes this happen, right? Oh mm. my god. Okay, Ooh, look at that. Of course the Maverick dies, that was inevitable. Yes, yeah. They were never gonna survive. I think the Amazing blows. reaction from Beaver though. I know, yeah. That was crazy minimap awareness. So he's going up to seven wyverns. He's got nine two more coming, so he'll have nine. Now here comes the push. Remember that those uh, Cantors can drop at any point, and there they go, firing oh off a salvo. God. I don't think that's, that's so going to stay alive for very long. Yep, indeed. Finally starting to fall. That Cyprian, the hero of them all, stays alive for a lot longer than we thought, but not enough. Trying to kite backwards using Stim. It's good initially, but uh, obviously this is not a winning proposition, but that's okay, because that's not all of what Beaver is planning. He now has four star ports, and they can produce plenty of Wyverns if that's what he decides to do. Back at oh home, the Argosy completely Max. idle. I just realized this Argosy actually doesn't matter because there's enough madcaps to deal with, like, I don't know, three star sovereigns at this rate, man. That's a lot of madcaps. Yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, and a couple of Imperians do just lose against medium numbers of madcaps. That's one of which is being made right now. An Empyrean coming out from that Argosy. We're adding two more gates and maybe making a second Argosy. We don't have a Crucible yet, but uh, you're getting to that point where you're going to start to think about that. Now, here, here it comes. The bottom right not actually saturated right now, but it will be revealed to the beaver as he is carving a path His over there. about to be unsaturated. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> remember the Walker Cow was oh towards God. 90, and now we're down below 60 in just a moment Real. here. What a match. What a move. The yeah. Empyrean not going to be able to ward that off. He's going to go after the natural, which was not taken away either. And, ooh, baby, we're starting to see some worker deaths. Well, now that you've revealed him, you've got to just trade him off right. And he is going to basically reset the work account here. Yeah. Uh, oh, my God. And what's the reaction from Benno? He's not even really chasing this of anything. They're just, like, running roughshod over no, his base. No, don't transfer in towards them. Oh, goodness. That's the worst well, that's possible option. Oh, the Empyreans wow. are here. They're probably going to kill these. But, I mean, the damage has been done. Wait, we'll oh, see. they're going to catch a couple out. on the way out. Thanks. Oh see ya. God, are you kidding me? Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> they're even going to get out. He only lost one, right? Like, oh, my God. Yeah, he lost, I think he lost two total. Oh, no, they're going to another base over here. That's, like, the last scribes he has. And they go right over there. He doesn't even have a bank to rebuild them. I mean, he has queued up four already, but it's going to be a very steep hill to climb oh to get back here. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Dude, Every if single you, base game. If you don't just A move and win at this point, Benno is out of the game for sure. So. Yeah. It, it is just knocking him out, isn't it? Gorgon's even being produced because he knows he just needs to trade off now. Can Beaver get the killing blow? His army's looking for it. His army's bigger. The Imperials, though, are going to be difficult to deal with. I'll hear some Gorgons, Gorgons to try to do a little bit of last minute protection as the Wyverns try to fly in and find any additional scribes. They are moving back to the natural to saturate, but the rest Dude, of the bio so balls cool. have been moving forward. Got I him. love that he's taking two split positions here because he's gonna hold that ramp on the left and the bridge in the middle. <laughs> how many, yeah, why how many not? Gorgons are there? Get a couple of them. The Gorgon count is uh, pretty low right now. It's only well, not four. enough to deal with Imperians yet. But Ahmed. soon. Ahmed. Nice. The Harakans on the field. One of the best units you could possibly make at any time in any game. That's right. Uh, it's gonna be roasting the Protoss, but they will get absolutely annihilated by Cantors. I will say. Yeah, there's also no healing with that squad for whatever reason. All the clerics decided to hang out with the cool kids over here on the left. <laughs> yeah, on the high ground, I guess. Yeah. We can make more. I think shamans are probably going to come down here. Not very synergistic with Harakans, though. The air army still looking for kills, and if he runs in and kills, like, the scribes one more time, then Beno is just, like, a static force. He's well, like, you know, uh, he hasn't really done anything. He's, like, he's not dropped the Acantors for some counter damage to sort of keep the mm -hmm. air in check, right? He's, uh, he's Six captaincies now. Yeah. Man, Beaver unlocking the macro this game. There we go. Getting a couple Oof. of dodgeballs there. Oh, no. He's going to look away, though. Okay, never mind. He pulls them back. Flanking army yeah. from the high ground. This is huge. If he's going to push across the bridge at the same time. Now, this Cantors, like I said, are going to do huge damage, but is it enough? Two of them, the the two of them are already time. dead. Yeah, there's only one left. 
Nightcap's man there will damage, but here are the Empyreans to inflict their damage. At the same time, the Air Army is going into the main. I don't know if there's anything there to stop, but he could depower the Protoss base or just destroy the production, sure. A couple Gorgons coming in to distract this top Empyrean, and there's only one down here. Not going to be able to yeah, take care. will handle this. Oh, yeah. He cannot man. fight this. He needs to get out, but I think he might be distracted by the force in his main. One yeah. Empyrean falls, another one's going to go down. More scribes have been murdered. He's still just drive buying all that stuff. Oh, my God. Wow. A nice, decisive game here from Beaver. Gavin, the, the Wyvern rotation, and yeah. absolutely rending the scribe count. Wow. Absolutely mauled him there and crushed his army to boot. Really nice job building up that uh, lethal, like, spine-breaking Wyvern run by. I know, yeah, and that was something where, like, the... the it's so funny, because he had he had, uh, he had had the tools necessary. Benno had all these witnesses all over the place. What does he do with them? Uh, apparently not scout the enemy's main, so that's kind of interesting. I'm going that to ties Axiom. us up at 1-1. One, one, that's right. And Benno gets to pick the map, picks Axiom. I mean, how can you complain about that? That's right. Ben on the top right, Beaver in the bottom left. We love to see Axiom. Pretty standard map, but uh, pretty easy to defend on if Beaver pursues the same strategy. Seems like Benno did not really have an answer for that. Even if that massive run by hadn't happened, I feel like Terran was in a pretty good position. So what is Benno going to bring to the table if Beaver just tries to repeat that success? Hmm. Interesting stuff. Of course, the Terran victory takes longer than the Protoss one. That's just the way that the race works. Brood War fans mm -hmm. will know that. But that does mean that we are tied up, like you mentioned. And, uh, you know, yeah. I don't know. I, I feel like Benno, he is his own worst enemy sometimes. He just doesn't attack. Sometimes he just sits. Yeah. Even though he has, like, an army advantage or he has, like, an avenue where it, sometimes that's the only thing he can do. Like, when you go down to sub-25 scribes, and your enemy has triple digits. Yeah, you, you have to attack. It, right? You have to do something. Find some advantage. And, well, uh, you know, it didn't happen. And against Bio specifically, mm. I think if you take the position you want on the map, like Bio needs to be in the right spot on the map, right? If it's tucked back in the Terran base, it's really bad. So you definitely want to posture more aggressively in that case. I think so, yeah. We'll be a uh, stockade into Quarry. This one, a much faster Quarry. You know, I wonder if it was a mistake of Benno as well not to commit to that drop earlier. I wonder how much that sort of set him behind, getting all that investment and not actually using it. Yeah, interesting, because he never really did use it for anything other than trying to... Yeah, he got hit by one watchdog missile and thought, oh, no, I'm not going to do it. He just yeah. ran back, right? Right, Seven yeah, yeah. Sims in there could have still killed a lot of workers. Could have made a big difference in that game. I wonder if Beaver even know, knew that that happened. I feel like the first time he'll have seen that, because I don't know if he's checking his replays, is... Oh yeah, that hap that uh, must have happened. That I must have been totally fine to do my silly tier two rush, and then it turns out Beto is like five clicks away from unloading three cantors <laughs> in his face or whatever. And that yeah, case, I mean, it was yeah, just a Simpson time. zealot, but still. And any time three cantors on your main will be very worrying, right? But yeah, even the Sims do seem like a pretty good drop candidate, yep. except like I was saying, you put a lot of money into one envoy is the only problem I have with it. Well, it's going to be a two-gate opener here for Benno as he has foregone the lattice. Second one is there and was scouted. You'll know it's exactly what it is. He scouts the bio. So I guess Benno is thinking to himself, I'm just going to overpower him. And this time he's also chasing down the mason, which I do appreciate because he knows that his opponent hasn't do, done anything aggressive. There's no, like, fulcrum on the map for a vulture run by. He knows he can leave his base. And the, the worst thing that happens is, like, what, two Mavericks come across, stimmed or something, and they're already taking yeah. damage. He's going to be more than fine to clean that up with whatever comes out of the gateway next. So he's going to go ahead and hunt down that worker. That means that we're going to have slower watchdog scouts from the beaver. And that does add up. That does mean it make a difference. Well, on that note as well, the fact that Beto's going to gateway here, he's still pumping the Dracodons. He needs to put some pressure on, or he's just going to be behind. Because Beaver, of course, has the quarry already, yep. and he's getting the treasury. Now, uh, of course, Beaver still has to come down the ramp and secure this natural. That is mm. going to be tricky. And honestly, those Mavericks, even standing on the edge there, I think is kind of dangerous. The Dracodons will still come in and kick their ass if they're not careful. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. You don't get a crazy amount of uh, range you know, advantage over them, per se. Uh, there is a Cyprian coming, as well as a second stockade, so we will start to see a little bit more of the heavy-duty stuff. He's got a lot of gas in the bank already again, but I think he's just saving up for that treasury. Going to go ahead and land it. So he's, he's trying okay. to stick with what won him the game before, but there are three Dracodons in his base already. Yeah, I mean, if Benno just tries to hold the natural here, it's going to be very annoying for Beaver to deal with. Uh, and so far, he's getting that started. The army that Beaver has right now cannot really come down this ramp. 
No, we have a fourth Drakadon coming as well. Some Zealots in production back at home. Benno going to go ahead and take his own expansion. And this Mason Scout confirms indeed. I think that one of them, that was probably going to be a Watchdog Builder. But uh, yet again, sniped and not pulled back in time. It feels bad to play red in the Intel, but Benno is still not really innovating very much here. He's making a Legionnaire right now. Um, so I feel like against Benno, you can assume it's going to be those Cantor drops pretty much every game, though. Yeah, that's right. Definitely somewhere is uh, he put his best foot forward in this qualifier so far. If you think about the game versus Top Ramen, that was pretty close on this very map. That was where we saw his uh, a Cantor Micro do pretty well for itself. A Fulcrum being started over here. Not able to use the treasury just yet. This is where that theory comes into play. Do we end up seeing people drop like the lodestone? Hold on though, I'll, I'll, I'll oh, talk about that a little bit later. Terran. Yeah, the... yeah, he's gonna get absolutely crushed here. Coming down the ramp way too aggressively. Three Supremes all that's left. Dragons just walk up the ramp. I think he's just lost the game. Already. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. probably just over. He's got a Haraka. It takes... but... It's a good unit to have, but only one will not last long. Oh That's man, right. the last Cypria just gets deleted. GG. Yeah, GG. Okay, Benno. One game away from placing into the Acropolis, getting himself oh into that main event. And the Beaver 99 back against the wall. That was, these are, again, very quick games for Benno. I mean, the Titan Forge one wasn't so quick, but quicker than the uh, match on Impetus. So he's already yeah, up there. And moves. this is looking a little rough for our Terran boy. Yeah, you got to respect that uh, Protoss has delayed their expansion just to get the army to deal with you there, and he didn't even have an anchor building on the high ground or anything like that, so that was just very brave, honestly. It was, it was. We're going to go to Derelict here. It is going to be a, the pick of the Beaver 99, leaving Germination as the decider if necessary. Benno in the bottom left, the Beaver in the top right. Well, and hey, this is Derelict 1, not Derelict 2, so he can easily secure the natural with an overhang uh, anchor with the Cyprians, so maybe that's the better option here. Yeah, that's right. And germination is a little bit more awkward by comparison to take your natural versus a Protoss contain. So well, we'll see if he goes for the stockade again, because he did open that Fulcrum in game one. Yeah. That's so right. was he just planning to do that only on Titanforge and now it's all stockade all the time? It seems like it, although this one feels, you know, again, pretty optimized as far as the timing goes. Only one guy on gas. I don't know if that means that the, the quarry is going to be a bit slower and he's going to be going up to two stockade opener. I know that's something that you say you favor in general is the double stockade. Well, if you do do that, you don't get any gas at all yet, by the way. Mm. Um, so I think he's going to get a uh, quarry still just a little bit slower. Maybe he's going to get Harakens maybe because it costs him more minerals. I don't know. Yep. Yeah. We'll he see. gives you a little bit more economy to, to add in a second stockade or whatever Ooh. it is you want. Actually, no, if he was going Covenant, he would need more than one on gas anyway. Never mind. Yeah, that's right. But we have seen that the Savant is like a staple of the uh, Terran arsenal by this point. So it's yeah, kind of interesting. They were committing murder in that last cast we did. Yeah, that's right. Crazy stuff. And uh, we even got to see them get uh, fixed up and whatnot for the throne room stage, believe it or not. Fixed a bunch of their sound issues. Oh, nice. That's handy. Yeah, yeah. You may you may remember, Nebulon, we had this whole conversation of like, they're shooting so fast, they're breaking the sound because it wasn't playing any <laughs> audio. So it turns yeah, out... So now it, instead it breaks our ears. Yeah, well, it turns out the audio was playing fine if they were inside the anchor for the player who owned it. So like say Newt has like an anchor with savants in it. He can hear it and you can't. <laughs> so... Oh, well, that's good. Yeah. Because that's kind of like a counterbalance uh, to the, to, for the player using it. Like, like even if it's really strong shooting all this stuff, you know, you have to suffer your ears. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I like the idea. Unfortunately, uh, for anybody who's relying on that, uh, I fixed it. So now I had a place for everybody. Now Savant's are OP, god damn it. Yep, just from the audio. I mean, we do talk Once about again. that too, right? We talk about the fact that there are the, such things as audiovisual buffs, like when we get the new model buff in for uh, whatever. What is this proxy pile on here for them? Uh, I don't know. Is he going to build something? Is Let's it just there to block thing? the third base? I'm not sure. It's curious. He's looking for drops or something? Crazy. I don't know. But he, he, the scribe's still there, so he's doing something. Yeah, that's right. It will be a second stockade here after the quarry. So that means that there is no treasury. Venno steps forward with the scribe, but it's not its time yet. He needs to wait for more money. Could just add more gateways, I think. Yeah, he could do that. Would make some no sense. Money, I like yeah, the. We can do his producer gate. too right now. Well, thinks about it again. Back He's waiting forth. for money, dude. He can't afford it. It's yeah. going to be a gateway. No? Yes, there it is. Okay, interesting. Well, I do like Hello? the forward gateway sometimes. Usually it's think, like my second gateway instead of my third, but... 
I think he's just trying to replicate his success from the previous game. He just wants to have so much stuff mm. that Beaver comes down his ramp and just dies. Uh, and you know, it could work. Definitely could work. Double stockade again, similar thing. But an anchor already on the way. Beaver wised up a little bit here. Harakon being built. I'm not sure what you're going to use that for against the Draconans, because if you're staying in your base, you can't really get on and do some damage there. Well, in order for them yeah, to get vision before the witness, they do need to go true. up the ramp. So I guess you can put it like right on the lip here. Well, presumably that's not really Benno's plan here to go up the ramp, though. He just wants to deny the low ground. Here we go. The Draken is arriving at the perfect moment. And this is what really a four speed wants to try in this move. I mean, he has enough to push them back, but he's going to lose a lot. He's not going to kill anything. So he needs to be careful here. Yeah, lost two Mavericks. Got a stim forced. The anchor not yet in position to that overhang. And I that's guess that'll get. be rectified. Wouldn't it be nice to have a second Cyprian to put in that? I mean, the Cyprian is the unit that's actually going to be able to hit these all the time. Oh, he's floating it down. Needs to be very cautious here. I mean, he doesn't know there's two more gates being built, but he does land back on the high ground. Benno's sort of countering himself here by bullying him back up the ramp, though. He needs to bait him down. Yeah, this is curious. We've got double Cyprian coming out for yet another staffing of the anchor, which the uh, second one will be started right here. Is Benno just going to charge the ramp, or, or what is he planning? He's getting Legionnaires. He may well. I mean, he has to do something, right? Because he's not getting his own expansion. Uh, but I think the good play here is just to be patient and assume Terran's going to come down the ramp, and if they don't, you take your own expansion. Like, okay, you're not ahead, but you're certainly not behind. Oh, no. Back then. Okay. Mm. So knowing there's two Cyprians in there, you got to be quite careful here. He's got the Legionnaire, so it looks like he did want to try a pretty aggressive attack. Now, the Harakon will do very well against those. Uh, Cyprians pierce them, too, out. so unlike Zealots... Oh. Yeah. Well, do they even have any armor? The Legionnaire does not, no. Yeah, there you go. Well, I guess the Harakon not even that important, actually. Um, no, it gets a yeah, splash done. I think the damage over time that stops flash shielding for an extra two seconds is actually pretty big at the end of the day. But Yeah, but Legionnaire is the kind of unit that's running and fighting yes. until they die, though. They're not yeah. likely to get their shields back. That's more uh, important for the uh, versus like the Dracodons or whatever, right? Beaver really seems to understand the situation here, getting a bunch of anchors, thinking like, alright, it's not going to be like last game, I'm not going down that way again, but is he floating that anchor down? Okay, no good, I was going to say, that's the position you want to take there. Now, any units that come in or out are going to get bullied by the Cyprians. He's going to float these down to the low ground. He needs to move his army down simultaneously if he does this, otherwise they get picked off a bit easily. Well, Let's see. He comes on back just to scoop that Cyprian back up. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a little yeah, classic. unnecessary, but you know. And now he's moving all of them down. Okay. Ooh, I mean, this I is six Cyprians, so. Yeah, that's pretty pretty gnarly, but I really think you should have kept the high ground one. No real reason to move it down here. Uh, but he has, like, the force ready to sort of jump on anything that actually threatens the anchors. Treasury is done, but he does need to clean up those Draconids in the back still. That's not going to be easy. Third gate coming at three o'clock. Benno all in on, the, on that sort of idea. And this positioning of his six Draconids, I don't think they can really do anything. They're definitely locked in, and they certainly well, can't get up the ramp. They can really cause trouble for that bio trying to come down, though. Ooh, a vulture coming out as well. Man, I think Beaver's going to put some defense in mind. Oh, he's going to try and leave. <laughs> Venom's like, wait, how did you get here? What, what, at what point did oh this happen? God. He had no idea. Okay. And then loses one, actually. Not bad, not bad. And now I feel like Beno can just put down his expansion. He's doing okay here. Uh, but the work count is really low, I just realized, for Beno. He's cut scribes a lot to get this, but he can still afford a nexus. So I think if he puts a nexus down right now, he's still in the game. Yeah, let's see what he decides to do, recognizing he does have a pretty sizable Ooh. army for this level oh, man, this point in the game. He want to but... put a Nexus down, man. He wants to put no. the Terran down. That's right. Here comes a lot of melee stuff. Going to get on top of those Mavericks. They do pull back a very nice position now. Now this is a really deadly funnel for the melee units. Oh, yeah. They're stimmed. The best. They're stimmed, oh, baby. God. Can't even bust the first anchor. Finally, it'll go down. The Cyprian's being made short work of. But with no more Zealot and no more Legionnaire, all of those shots going straight onto the Dracodons, and I think Beaver has held easily enough. Benno, just going to concede. Well, damn, it was interesting to see Benno doing something different. Yes. But uh, Beaver, not susceptible to it. He lost that last game, and it's just like, you know what? No, I'm going to be fortified this game. Yeah, it's Beaver just... Game. Yeah, he's just checking what's happening. <laughs> he probably looked for the proxy, I suppose. Yeah, 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 exactly. Don't worry, we have fast-forward power. Going into, that means we are going to see a fifth game after all, okay. and it will be on Germination, and it will be to decide which one of our contestants will make it all the way to the much right. vaunted stage, man. I you, I agree with your estimation, Nebloin, that making it to Battlements, that's what it's all about. That's where the real tournament starts. So these two really want to make it, like you, you even say it shorthand, make it into Acropolis. Yeah, these that's what these two are all trying to do. Going to Germination, Beaver in the top left, Benno in the bottom right. All right, Germination a pick for Protoss? I don't know about that. 
The third being holdable with high ground is very important for Terran because that means they can do it without worrying about Dracodons. In the, before tier 2, Dracodons are pretty dangerous because you can range almost anything Terran has, but on this map, you could just use Mavericks and theoretically even hold three bases. So, I don't know, it gives Terran a lot of options. Yeah, so it's I, the last map I that wonder. was left over, right? So. Oh, right, they don't have a choice. Yeah, ah, they well, were forced into it. Case. It works out pretty yeah. nicely for the beaver, and that's because I think, you know, when Ben banned Sideshow early in the... Yeah, definitely uh, a, a mistake wrong. there. <laughs> Sideshow, again, i got to say, I think Benno... I don't want to criticize too harshly, but I think he just uh, doesn't know how good the map is for Protoss that he would ban it, because I think it's kind of ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as a comparison, it would be like if a Protoss banned Troy in the current ASL pool, if anybody's watching <laughs> Brutal like, Dude, if they had that, even the pros would, like, rebel... They would get me out of here. Then again, they do add dumb maps all the time. They had plasma. Yeah, it's in current times, ASL. What do you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty I can't soon. They had plasma though. Like, come on. What the hell are they doing? It's not like the map choices in uh, Acropolis. They're always perfect. Yes. Yeah. Of course. They didn't have infinite velocity for how many? <laughs> and it always gave good games. Game we coming? I don't think. I've ever played a game that's been streamed or casted on infinite velocity that I would describe as not a disaster. <laughs> but in what kind of way? Isn't it a beautiful disaster? I mean, I mean you make you make three hundred workers, aren't you happy? Yeah, I mean, I do like doing that. I do like doing that. It's yeah. true. All right. But, well, you know, it usually starts with me doing something dumb. All right, the lattice again. I get that good scouting. So, I mean, this sort of seems like. That if Protoss goes for the ladder, they're not trying to do anything too early. They just want to get that scout and play a longer game. Which I'm, I'm interested to see Benno go for that in this final game. He's realizing he has to knuckle down and really play this out if he wants to get in Acropolis on the line. Yeah, that's right. Go, oh going to do his best here, and it will be the stockade into the quarry. So, you know, I guess that's really been what Beaver has done. He's only incorporated Fulcrums later on if he's incorporated them at all. Stream back functional for me. Yeah, uh, I think it's worked out pretty well actually. The bio in all these games look pretty good. I mean, obviously he lost that game instantly on uh, what map was it? I've already forgotten. Was it Axiom? Yeah. Um, but uh, it's not like there was anything fundamentally wrong there. He just moved down too early, right? So so far the bio looking pretty good just for turtling up on two bases if that's the style you want to go for. But I wonder, can you do stuff like idle? If you spam in a lot of golems, is it a play? Mm. I don't know what options Lattice might open up here. The Sim is an option, but Cyprians do deal with that. Yeah, I would say quite nicely, and there's one already on the field is the fourth military unit, second stockade behind it, consistent worker production, now taking that advantage. Yeah, you know, the Cyprian is really key here, I think, uh, for holding early on with this bio, because it just has the range to stop the Dracodons from really bullying you. If you have bunkers with only Mavericks, Dracodons can kind of just trade shields against that, but yeah. Cyprian really forces them to commit or not commit. Yeah, I think so as well. And factoring Let's all that in, I mean, the the fact that the Cyprian works the way that it does with the kinetic penetration also helps it scale. As long as you have some Harakans for the front line versus Zealots and stuff, and there will be an anchor True. coming. Yeah, it is a bit dicey to go for melee, I feel like, against this sort of defense. You know, when you're up against mech, I think it's a lot more effective, actually. Because uh, the mech units tend to have, like, you know, slower attacks and stuff like that. So getting melee units on top of them is more effective. Yeah, once again, a nice scout coming in here. He's going to see that nothing's really going on. Um, and you know, Beaver with like 300 gas. Honestly, if you scout this and there's nothing in there, you're like, hang on, is he proxying two star pads? Like, what's mm. going on here? Oh my god. Well, that's uh, Jackie Lansky's oil reserve up there. That's right, that's right. You know, I was just saying to myself that I should fix this part because technically this is a lower height level than this. And it's, oh. it's because the, this tile doesn't exist at the maximum height level, and Biddy B was like, oh, I guess I'll just use what we have. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> okay. well, I guess it'll never, like, it'll probably never come into fruition, but I should still probably try to do it. And, uh, wouldn't you know? This is what we see here. It doesn't Are actually you matter. Building a watchdog. I know. Just yeah. to kill that. <laughs> Quick, get out of there! Time's running out. Oh no! It, oh, it doesn't can't see it, it anyway. Oh my god! Yeah. He selects it. He's sweating. Oh no! He goes uh, in. Ah! Uh, I can't believe it. He even stuck his <laughs> maverick up there. Wow. Oh my god! All right, little ragtag force coming out here, but I don't think it's going to get that much done. But this time, Benno did not cut scribes. He has the nexus, so he's just going in for a bit of a pokey. He can cause some trouble with Terran trying to come down. It's always possible to get some sick simulacrum clones. Let's see what he does with this. Yeah, that's another thing to point out is that maybe you're uh, with your anchor and your Cyprians and stuff. You just walk in, take a glancing blow, start multiplying sims. I mean, the problem is they're never that space efficient versus bio, so. 
I don't know if they would actually help. Yeah, you but I think I said this to you before. I think a good play would be to like replicate a bunch of them and not use them to attack or anything. Just like put them all over the map. Yes. Yeah. So that anything that moves anywhere has to at least be spotted or maybe take some damage from them. Yep, that's right. Now two more anchors being started as the stockades continue their production. Quarry on the low ground. A little bit audacious with no actual defenses in place just yet because that's a very mm. expensive structure. He did that the other time as well on Impetus, and I gotta say, you gotta be careful about that. If Protus is on the ball and they just run in and start pushing it back, it's a big problem. Think, think about not this. something you wanna lose. Yeah, think about this position too, right? The spawn Imba with this one facing the entrance to the, the <laughs> map, whereas if you spawn <laughs> yeah, down it's here, the it's. Damn it's game. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely a lot easier if you spawn down in the bottom right, so. That's Dude, so funny. If it was in his face there, he might have just won the game if he picked those anchors off. Yep. I don't know. Yeah, because the, the actual process of the beaver erecting this wall has not been like uh exactly super solid but either way he gets away with it here and he is going to go ahead and saturate his gases in the natural that's going to give him access to that around this time it's around six minutes actually it'll probably be like a 6 30 or 6 20 uh, atlas timing here yeah he's got the minerals just got to get that gas and he's pretty much there you know now with these three anchors this defense very solid nothing going to come in on the ground there do we see an envoy from beaver not beaver from benno he just started i was wondering when it would come and he's got the Sims again, so it's really going to attempt a similar thing. In this map, there's so much drop space, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't get in. Look at that scout turret, though. Yep, made by the That's Mason that uh, worker scouted him to begin with and then walked away. Oh, is he going to see that on void? That'd be huge. Yeah, it's a little bit of ways of, from being able to do that. He probably wants to see if he can stay the keep the watchdog as alive as possible. Atlas going to be sp scouted here by the Witness, which is a good game that people should play. Envoy <laughs> coming out here from uh, All right. Embassy. And look at that, instantaneously up. scooping up some Sims. Yeah, he's going to pick up the other ones from his army, I imagine. He's got that Zealot. Seems like that's the Benno Classic, the seven <laughs> Sim, one Zealot drop. Oh, dude, if he could delay that Atlas, that'd be pretty huge. That's right, or yeah. Or cancel it. Adding some Fulcrums here. Oh, canceled the Fulcrum. Once again, fooled you. I can't believe you keep fooling for this. I don't know. know. Every time. Oh, yes. I mean, listen. What did, didn't I tell you that the like Beaver really impressed me by... Having that one uh -oh. game where he started off by canceling his fulcrum, and then oh my here, he, here we are, well, him doing the same that's thing. That's a signature move, I guess, dude. Yeah. This is a huge problem. Delaying this atlas is causing so much problems for Terran. Now, the maps will come in here Ooh, to clean this okay. up. It does get the envoy, yeah. but I mean, this is well worth it so far. He's got a bunch of masons. Yeah. Delayed the tier two for like, you know, 30 seconds now, still not being built. No clones coming in there, though. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, there was no coincidence. Like, there, there was no uh, attack at the same time, right? No coordination there from the rest of the army. So I don't know if you want to try that against five Cyprians in uh, Ankers, though. Well, yeah, but I feel out. like with all the Mavericks gone for the fire support, you could probably bust a couple, make it scary, overload your opponent a little bit. Yeah, true. All right, finally resumes that, but very nice delay coming in here. And we see Beaver's money spiking up hugely because he has to deal with this. You know, even though Benno on paper, he lost like, you know, a thousand minerals there. Uh, I think it's still well worth it, actually. Watchdog staying I mean, alive I, here as well. I guess we can see pretty directly it's cost Beaver like 1,400 minerals because he's unable to spend that with the sort of, you know, clustering that's happened here. Ooh, the Atlas detection. Mm hmm I still will never forget when I was trying to use Lakizalisks against uh, Mesk in an FFA and he landed his Atlas to use it as a detector. <laughs> <natural>. Nice. <laughs> Does it have detection while it's flying? No, you have to land it. That's why I was yeah, wondering. No. I was wondering late in the game, maybe you make like a few of those flying because they're tanky enough, you know? Pretty tanky, but also pretty pricey. Yeah. Well, you remember that infinite velocity game where there was like carriers and arbiters and Imperians and all that? If I could float the Atlas in for detection, maybe. Mm. Okay, yeah. Just go. It's hard to deal with those uh, Solarians under Arbiters. Uh, arbiters Didax, what am I saying? There's no there it is. An arbiter. Not anymore. It's just a dream. Ultralisk? Yeah. <laughs> the Envoy comes There's no such thing as purifiers in Cosmonarchy. That's true. That is true. And apparently in StarCraft. <laughs> so. Yes, that was really funny. I mean, they technically do exist, but. You know what I mean? It's goofy. Just in the lore. Uh, I'm surprised Benno has not got a third Nexus here. I feel like it's a pretty big mistake. It's not like he can't afford it. He needs to take advantage of the map control while he has it. Just getting those Cantors still. He's going to have to deal with Beaver's Madcap play. And honestly, it did not look like he had an answer to it last time on Impetus. Yeah, we've got four captaincies being started here. And I don't know, man. It's looking a little rough. Benno does have a better spending overall, but I mean, he's got less uh, of a... An economy very, very so, ever so slightly. Certainly less than he needs to have at this point. Right, Cyprian Anchor's still proving their worth, forcing him back once again. Well, they yeah. can come in from the other side here, and honestly, it looks quite threatening for Beaver because his tier two units aren't up yet. Sentinel's just starting now. 
Mm -hmm. Could he potentially attack in here? With the Akantor, the Mavericks could be victims here. Oh yeah, big time. Ooh. And they're trying to put, position themselves as the aggressors, but I don't know that you can do that. Where's the stem? We need to get that out. There it is. It's pretty late. The Akantor going to fire off a <laughs> shot. Falling on back. Yeah, Quite no, the range here. I feel like the Akantor needs to be in a little bit closer to the front. But no, he is no. pushing forward here. Don't squish your men. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right, he's going to push his third back. Looks like he was going to have to rely on those anchors for now. Sentinel's probably going to finish just in time here. Yeah, that treasury should absolutely be lifted here, but it doesn't look like it will in time. Instead, the Draconins will be able to finish it off. Almost certainly, no, they Ooh. don't step forward, but there's a nice shot onto the workers that otherwise would have maybe repaired that and given any opportunity. Madcap's getting oh, absolutely no. shredded. Yeah, oh my god, double a Cantor now. Double yeah. Cantor with double Envoy. He's doing so much damage, dude. He's better about to qualify in. He just killed so much. Sentinels here. You gotta mm. be careful now. You don't want to go overcommit with these Cyprians and Sentinels. Your Dracula's put all pop suddenly. And uh, he does pull back. But see the losses he already took. Yeah, oh. absolutely. And that's just with two of them. To catch that. Yes, they did. Apparently they did. <laughs> okay, he's gonna go ahead and start elevatoring. That's his plan. Oh. We've only got no, some mad caps coming in later. literally never won a game. I've never seen this win a game, even one time. Well. Can, can he make it happen? Yes, that's well, the question. Well, there's nothing in here. I know, there's yeah. There's nothing in here. Well, Madcap's oh starting to pop on out, stroll on out. Ooh, instantly catching some balls to the face. Okay, I mean, this looks pretty good, dude. Maybe maybe I was wrong. Maybe he just does straight up win like this. Yeah, this is really crazy. I mean, one of these captaincies is going to go down here in a moment. He's rallying away now, which is the wise okay. move. Is he going to bring the anchors back or maybe land the sentinels? No, Madcaps, that's not the spot you want to be in. Oh, no. he's landing the sentinels. Okay, that probably is going to keep him alive, but so much damage has been done. The third is up for Benno as well, continuing production as well. Sentinel's going to do a pretty good job cleaning stuff up. I'm surprised he didn't try and pick those up again with the Envoy. Oh, he's still at large, though. Yeah, but these most are pretty wounded. I feel like he's only going to come away with saying that he killed a couple Sentinels and delayed the third. I mean, the third is still technically alive, but only, only for though. a little bit here. Took out the whole army. Is he going to get another captain? Is he getting one captain? He's not bad. That's a bit of minerals picking off. Oh, and look at this. He's going to come in harassment. Oh, but the Sentinel. Oh, oh. Oh, two <laughs> no. for one. And the treasury Just dies. as he clones. Oh, gets, yeah, getting that treasury is pretty huge, actually. And like I said, Benno is up on his own third base. He can remake those Akanto Envoys, no problem. Still just spamming Draconins here, though. Draconins, as the game goes on, are going to get worse and worse and worse. He has made a lot of the uh, Akantors, and he does obviously still have one Akantor in this Envoy. Just trying to see if he can scoop up a little bit of extra damage. That one armor, dude. Uh, yeah. That Madcap, very glad he put on his vest that morning. Yes, yeah. Listen, he's people say people say high damage means armor doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Eat your heart out, dude. This Madcap's still alive. It's probably going to deal All a right, thousand a damage later. Here, yeah, abusing the fact that no watchdogs got put up. That's a pretty big mistake by Beaver, to be honest, knowing that Beno's a guy who makes envoys all the time. Yeah, like, look, he's even that much. He's uprooted the captaincies as well. Like, yeah. Beno probably feels pretty good about this game. He's obviously 500 gas away or more from being able to drop a Monument of Sin, but other than that, I think he's happy. Dude, I want to mention a game, but it hasn't happened yet when, uh, <laughs> when this game played. You know the game I'm thinking of. Yes. Uh, with the same player in it, but anyway. <laughs> Still five Draconids being pumped out, dude. Benno is going to have like 100 Draconids, but you could have 300 Draconids. You can't get in narrow locations against like Madcaps and Sentinels, no matter how many you have. Like, I feel like Beaver has built the sort of counter to this. Yes. And Benno not really developing any further. Now, he has the army count, no doubt. His economy is slightly better. Uh, but he needs to move into something else. And once again, four starports coming up. It's Wyverns. If you get enough Wyverns, it's he Wyverns. can't even handle Draconids. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's got to do the same, same move, dude. I think, and does Benno, you know, prepare for it? Again, where are the witnesses at? He's got mm. one over here. Where are the engrams? Wardens won't do it. You need engrams to deal with that. Um, and I think, honestly, Protoss in general... Once they get established on like four bases or okay. so, they should just get an engram in every base. Oh, he sees it. No. Oh, it's Gorgon's though. At? Yeah. And so okay. he, okay. You know, it does die, it. but he sees the star ports. Even if he didn't click on them to confirm Gorgon, you can still. And two engrams are on the way, by the way. So yeah. I think he's thinking about those weapons. Honestly, even against Gorgons, I think you need it because they can still harass a little bit. Um, right. So I think good response so far. Now, is he going to get architects? Because Gorgons would obviously victimize those pretty hard. What is his choice of comp here? He hasn't teched beyond just Arden Authority and Cantors. My god, man. 18 workers idle. But taking a fourth base at 6 o'clock? Nah, I've done worse. <laughs> you've, seen, you've seen I've done a lot worse. <laughs> there you go, never again. I like this response a lot. I think Benno aware of what he needs to do here to stop the harassment from absolutely eviscerating him. 
Um, I am still worried about the ground army though, and you know what? This is a problem Benno has. His army needs to be like controlling the exits to Beaver's base because That's right. if he's stuck in a narrow area like his own base when Beaver comes out, it's going to be pretty bad for him. Back on the Gorgons. Okay, well, we've got some Dracodin hit squads all across the map. We've got another Mason scout that's going to find out about 6 o'clock and then promptly die, presumably. Let's see what he ends up thinking about that. I mean, the Beaver can't really do too much right now without using air units. He's going to add another quarry. I'm not sure he actually needs that, but he is at a worker disadvantage right now. Well, what I wonder... Um, well, he could make some Telos and deal with the uh, inner yeah, base. that's Beaver, right. I don't know saying it like that, and mine from it. Yes. I wonder if Beaver went for a bunch of Gorgons instead of Wyverns because he's thinking like he's more behind than he is. He felt like he was almost dying and it's like, all right, I just got to get something to defend. What Protoss is bringing next? Because, you know, if Empyreans start showing up or whatever, or Solarians, you'll be very glad if you make Gorgons. And hey, there is an Argosy on the way, as well as another gateway. Yeah, and there's a lot of gateways here. So Benno trying to keep his money low. I mean, it's not working out just yet with 2k minerals, but uh, he Dude, can still give it a shot. Tier 3 just started. Stop with the Dracodins. Like, seriously... It doesn't matter how many dragons you have. Once there's a critical mass of stuff like madcaps, they'll have a hard time even getting close. I mean, they do have the same range, but the madcaps, when powered up, will just destroy them. Four Arcantors, uh, four get... uh, Acantors, excuse me, in these envoys. Yeah, that could do it. That'll do good work. Um, if if Osbeno gets the right sort of surface area and or concave, I feel like the dragons still be very valuable. But in general, I really want to see him start making other stuff. And look at that Daedalus on the way. That's right, tier oh three. Oh my god, how did he afford that? That's what you get with the three bases, man. Only now putting yeah. down some gas caps. I feel like it... I mean, maybe you're trying to get for, like, a tier three timing of some kind. But don't you think it's a little suspicious to go for... You just unlocked tier three, and now you're going to go for a reservoir. Well, he's mining. Oh. <laughs> that, that was some... Um, I well, don't know what that was. Those demonic you got to remember, there is, like, a sort of downtime, right? And you're kind of making an investment of losing gas now to get gas later. So, I don't know. The sooner you get the tier 3 out, the better, because uh, it's not too gas expensive to just make like a single tier 3 building and start getting stuff out, and maybe that will be critical in the defense. So I sort of like that idea. Oh, he's coming in here. No engram at that base. All right, he's going to go for the natural, Ooh. but he will get repulsed pretty yeah. easily here, I think. Yep. Don't really want a chance that. They could probably kill the engram, but you take a lot of damage, and the Dracodons would be enough to push them back. Treasury available here to move over to that 12 o'clock location. Six o'clock is where Neither a lot player. of Benno's forces are consolidated at right now. Neither player utilizing the inner base, bit of a mistake there. I mean, I suppose Protoss only really wants to take the gas, but still. Second Argosy will be Empyrean during the fight. Protoss, unlike Terran and Zerg, cannot cap that gas in the inner base. I guess they can drop something. Yes, but they have to drop a scribe in order to do that. Man, painful. Well, I guess you've got one voice already. All right, so did we see what he's making for the Argosies yet? Are they still just Argosies? Empyreans, yeah. Okay, I mean, they're pretty good if the numbers get up. Oh, it's a Solarian as well. Solarians I'm not so much a fan of. I think usually what you want here... Oh, the Gorgon's taking a fight against these Dracons. They're not bad against them, but they're also not great. So sort of a, a draw there. Let's kill yeah. one. Some of them were also not with the fight, so that is a bit awkward here. Trying to secure this 12 o'clock location. Adding some Sentinels for it. Tier 3 is now complete for our Terran player, and he's considering his be... options. He's got to go down at assembly, right? He's got to... I don't know. He's, he's looking in the back of his base. Iron Foundry. Oh, okay. I wonder what it would make here. Penumbras would be pretty good, but I guess they always are. Because there's no melee units here. If there are a whole bunch of zealots, I'd say not so. All right, but Benno realizes this base on the low ground. is going to come over here and try and fight. Dracon's sort of coming in single file, but are there enough of them? Where are the Acantors? They're the real damage dealers. The Imperium are not going to do a bad job either, though. Where are the Acantors? I don't know. Oh, okay, here we go. We just came on. Oh, that's five a lot of them. Of them. Oh it's it's yeah, dodgeball time, that. baby. Oh, well, the mm, Dracodons are already dead, Dracodons. pretty much, yeah. Yeah, they're just kind of fodder, really. They don't really do much, but it might not matter. I think he's done enough here that he's going to crush through this defense and at least push this back. Gorgon's coming on in just for a second there, but not able to commit to the fight. Only well, the one Empyrean. It's so many Dracodons, because if you run out of them, the Gorgons will come in here and annihilate everything, but uh, as it stands, there's enough easily to push back the Gorgons. Although, their numbers are still falling. Yeah, that's right. Just be careful. Once Benno has like six or seven Imperians, it becomes a lot less scary because Gorgons don't even really want to approach. But uh, as it stands, he's got to be careful. If the Dragons all go down, suddenly the Gorgons will swoop in and annihilate what he has. Another Iron Foundry on the way, by the way. Yeah, he's going up to, I think, four of them in total. I swear to God. If he wins this game with Paladins, I'm going to be very mad. Ah, okay, no, it's for Penumbra for sure, penumbra's. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Scooping up the Acantors. Well, we could do a deadly drop in the main. I mean, I guess Terran can just lift, but still, you could do a lot of damage there. Yeah, well, it's going to sacrifice the add-ons, and the add-ons are 
certainly oh, yeah, that take is a while. Expensive. Right? Well, imagine you have a number crewed, queued up and you have to cancel. That's pretty huge too. Is he going to go for it? The Solarian plus Envoy combo, just as good as in Brood War, the Carrier plus Shuttle, I'm sure. Looks like he is looking at it. Oh, I like this. Well, I don't know, man. There's a lot of Gorgons that can pivot over there. It feels like it could be a, a death sentence. Like he just changed his mind, it looks like. The Envoy's just following. Yes, they're right, well, going to follow. He picked off that base and he pulls back. I like the move in general. I think it's a good idea. But again, Bano's back getting huge. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Just throw down like eight lattices, man. Start spamming out those vassals. They can do a lot of work for you. I mean, even if it's not vassals, if you have eight lattices, you can just add golems to your army. There's a lot of ways to spend mineral there. Mm, double didiacts. Oh, the didacts. Okay. okay. That's a way to do it. Where is his monument? Is this Benno we're looking at? He doesn't have a monument of sin yet. 20 minutes know, in the yeah. game. Come on, man. All right. We've got a third future station and both iron foundries that are already equipped are going to go ahead and start churning out the penumbras. That's going to be a real challenge for Dracodons, man. And the Cantors even won't be able to handle that. A lot of Gorgons still patrolling. Yep, this uh, 9 o'clock location was maybe in Beaver's sights. That guard will be dealt with swiftly, and the rest of them will be on their way. Hey, if they uh, come uh, here before the Engram finishes, I think this base yeah. will get shut down. I mean, how much do the three Wardens do? I guess not that much. Yeah, Engram's very vulnerable as they're warping in here. And yeah, that will be picked off. He's going to have to bring the army down, but will it even be in time? I feel like this Nexus could probably be picked off if Beaver commits here. Well, Benno's not even reacting just yet. His army is still massing oh. up in the middle of the map. So he's going to well, go ahead definitely. and concede that and just add an engram or two down here. Oh, which really? could honestly get picked Dude. off if Beaver's paying attention. The pylon attention. down there. Look at that pylon at the, the below ground. Yeah, like, you could just kill that. Then this base is wide open. Yeah, but is he really going to even think about that? In the moment, do you even notice that? But well, I'm just conceding that base, not trying to do anything to defend it. He's still economically ahead by two bases here, but the tech difference may be huge because uh, Benno's still just on that same stuff. He has not really used the uh, Argosies that much. He's making more Solarians now, but like I was saying, I really think you need Empyreans more than you need Solarians in this situation. He's going to come in here. Probably going to be repulsed. Yeah, that one Ingram shot is enough to make him think, you know what? No. And a second pile actually did get built. Although it's not really redundant for anything other than the Sengram, I guess. But That's an important building, though. Uh, I would like to see Sentinels get built by that one lone mason that's been there since the start of the game. That'd be pretty sick. Yes. Well, think about it. The overhang, you know, there's not even there's any workers at the there. space. Yeah. Hmm. No. Yeah, there's a lot of Solarians, though. That gets a bit dicey. Yeah. Start... The... Hmm. Sorry, you go. No, yeah, that's definitely a big deal. I'm wondering where the Didax went, though. Ooh, are they sneaking around the map somewhere? Or did they, get, the did they get canceled? No, okay, they're here. There's only one of them, though. I don't know where the other one Maybe went. a canceled one. That's a lot of stuff still in the natural as well. Yeah, recall at any time can still potentially end the game, right? Ah, it's here's the other much. one. Ooh. And I think it's for that exact purpose, Nebulon. There's no the... No uh, being made here, by the way. Do you think Fever maybe is trying to hide the fact he has tier 3? It could be. I mean, he's he's only now going to go oh, ahead man. and show it. Look at those babies coming out here. Stewards are pretty good against Penumbras, though, because they kind of bait them into shooting their own army a lot of the time. Oh, so yeah. Be careful Ooh, here. Yep. Just like that. Oh, my God. That killed two Gorgons. That's right. Well, I killed a lot more stewards, though. I don't know how many more stewards there are. Oh, no! The Acantors oh. died inside the Envoids, and they're all Absolutely. dead now. Yeah. A lot of my caps have died, though. I mean, the Penumbras are kind of naked. Is there enough here to take them out? He's dying to do damage to them, He's but focused they are firing the Solarians. Efficient. They're not going to oh target the stewards. God. That was a critical right click right there. Oh, my God. He just melted everything. Oh, my God. Beaver's looking primed to win this game all of a sudden. Just one engagement, he just destroys the entire persona. Okay, there's another whole army here, and there's a recall still ready to go down. A recall on the main would definitely flip this game on its head after it just got flipped on him already. He's going for it. Are we going to have a base race here? Oh my god, more penumbras are ready, though. They are, but are they? I think they're already starting to leave out, filter out towards that 12 o'clock location. If they come down this ramp and go go large, it's going to take a little bit of time here. Here comes the didact. We'll start there to get shot. Has... He needs to cast the ability now. Oh, here it goes. No, it's, it's not going to finish. It's not even close to finishing. Oh, if only he'd sent both of them, it would have been so easy. Yeah, that's a... Right, uh, no, forced to defend. Listen, my man, I show Artosis that clip, and suddenly, what? They move slow and they channel? Yeah. Love it. Um, but now, you know, I was going to say, Benno would be really good in a base race situation because he has so much money. As long as he has, like, a scribe somewhere, then yeah. he's doing well. But now he has to fight this army head-on. Four right. Ancestrals coming up. I'm not sure what the best unit for Ancestral would be against this, but I guess a Tet Bombs would be decent. Um, but they are a bit slow. But hey, he's going to pick off one there. That's pretty huge. But the stack is still over here. That's right. Five of them in action. A single madcap for supervision. Everybody else <laughs> rotating He's back. the real boss there. You might think the guy in the big tank is, but no, it's that guy. Yeah, that's right. 
Oh, Benno, you've got yourself 7k minerals. If only you could train some units. Four of Tetons on the way. I don't know if they're actually good against Penumbras. I suspect they might not be unless they have like a high ground or something to snipe them. Because they rely on Splash a lot. I mean, their single target damage is good, but their rate of fire is so slow that they're not going to be that good in a heads up fight against Penumbra. Yeah, well, the Penumbra also, like, the, the cool thing about them is that they kind of, like, ignore the walkability of a lot of small units, so they just walk over them. Yes. Um, and, and well, that said, if the Tecton hits count, a Penumbra right? and it's got a bunch of buddies yep. underneath it, it will do a lot of damage to them. Absolutely. Uh, the Scribe's giving away the position of another base here, it looks like. Yeah, Beaver's not paying too much attention to that right now. He's setting up his own base over here, thinking about maybe putting a nice. well bore down there. Doesn't have the money. He's doing to well him. to continue expanding his economy while this fight's going on and, you know, keeping his money low. Oh, no. I mean, that's the no, thing. they're We're coming staying. back. No! Oh. The Madcap getting in there. He's That's taking right. kills. But yes. I that promotion. And now, oh. drive closer. I want to hit them with my sword. And he dies. <laughs> All right. I mean, the Engram's not going to be able to stop this. Veno has been paralyzed here under siege by these Penumbras. Under their shadow, you might say. And he's right. really just trying to find a response here. The like, Tecton's finally come out, but he's lost the high ground. He's missed his chance to get in there. They do outrange him slightly. But I don't know if it's really going to be that effective. Another army coming in from the top. I don't know how many penumbras are in there. Oh, it looks like five more. How can and they've gonna, they're going to have this? cliff advantage, Neblime. I think this game is coming to a head. Great stasis, oh, stasis down here, though. though. That is so huge against the monster on top of them. Wait, where is he going? He's no, kill those. he passed away. He's just A-move. Come on, attack them. What are you doing? Oh, wait, no. Allies. This is a classic move. You'll never believe this, Neblime. I promise it wasn't rigged. What happened? Are they invisible? What's going on? When you stasis a penumbra specifically, it turns invulnerable. Oh no! <laughs> I don't know why that happened. What the fuck? <laughs> is, that, is that fixed now? Did yeah, we fi up? as soon as I as soon as I saw that. <laughs> oh no, that's so sad. I know that's uh, horrible. Well, okay, the time is coming down here. I guess you going stasis. Oh my god, again. the clerics! Oh my god, the zealots <laughs> are the perfect move. Dude, he might still clean this up. He might still clean He's track. got the Aptekton range around. now. I don't think this force is going to yeah. go the distance. Well, he's stepping forward, though. Penumbra's are tanky enough. The Cable's doing their damage. Oh, yeah. yeah he's going to wipe that, dude. Yep. It's the, it, the Zealots were the key moment there, man. Beaver needed to focus wow. fire his, uh, the, the back line. Well, that's a much better use of his mineral bank than Draconids, right? The Draconids are just food for the Dracon uh, for Penumbra's. Hey, he still used the Invincible ones. I'm wondering what he's going to do with those. <laughs> yeah, okay, I won't use, and then he moves them and snipes that bit. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> So like I said, is that, that is fixed now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. What the hell was causing it? That's so it's weird. some Blizzard code that like it really, uh, uh, really asinine. It? That's a question. That's a question. Well, I mean, this game was yeah, sent he lost to me, a lot, but yeah, they sent they sent this one in, right? So it must be yeah, real. They must be real. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a I, I don't have a sixth game, stands. so yeah, they. I guess he just went stasis those. Yeah, yeah, he did. But I mean, I mean while. Benno is typing, oh, it's okay. actually Beaver who's getting kicked, his ass kicked here. Well, hang on, he got the Penumbras, he did a lot of damage from range here. Yeah, the Draconids kind of like occupied the Uptectons there. Oh no. So that was a little awkward. Big loss of like, what was it, three or four Uptectons there. I mean, Benno's still got his back. He's going to try and charge up the high ground. You know, if the Zealots can just get on top of those Penumbras, one gets in. And Dude, the Draconids actually that's, doing a bit that's of damage. That's friendly fire. That's friendly fire right there, man. You'll yeah, absolutely you see Okay. A few more penumbras falling. Okay, Beto's still in this to fight invincible units for his opponent. He's taking more bases. He's doing a good job. Continue trying to expand here, but his bank is dropping. Beto finally going to feel the pinch of running out of money here. Beaver being able to expand onto another base, but the three of the bases you have are definitely mined out. I guess that goes for Beto as well, though. Yeah, that's right. These three should go all the way up here, obviously. And look at that, a Minotaur. All right, now the nine assemblies in. You know what? I think it's quite good with Penumbra for a couple of reasons. First okay. off, they're just tanky in the front line because they're going to get closer than Penumbra. And second is they're not on the ground, so they're not going to impede the Penumbra's movement or sort of get in their way. I guess small units don't, though. Still, though, I think it's good to have a sort of front line tank and the Penumbra's in the back as the DPS as well. And they'll be quite good against things like Zealots. Oh, my God, this gateway army trying to come in. A nice flank from the Zealots, actually very good there. No. I was going to say, I hope he doesn't do stasis again, <laughs> which he does not. No, he doesn't, but I don't even know if he was paying too much attention to that army. Well, maybe this is really the call. Madcap plus Penumbra, because you can't even get close to him. Tecton's going to take out the Madcap Oh yeah, fast. big time. But they need to fall back away from the Penumbra, because they do not win this head-to-head -head fight. Splash oh, radius man. way smaller in the Penumbra. Definitely they monsters wave of this zealots. That's what they need here. Oh, Empyreans, you know. Going to do their best. It looks like he will clean it up. 
Yeah, this last off Tecton, though, is not going to stay alive, and that's really his, like, piece de resistance against all the bio. Does yeah. need those, for sure. He's got more, four more coming. Okay, he's producing four at a time, except now he's starting to run low on the money. All right, well, the game continues. Benno cleans up once again. Both players really have gone very low on army after all these big fights. Yeah, that's uh, right. You know, Benno kind of does have a disadvantage here because Terran 2-3 is better than really what he's making. He needs something like uh, a monument or... Um, I guess he's got the Ancestral is sort of the same tier, but I feel like he needs to build up like a really crazy comp to match Terran tier 3. Yeah, don't you feel like maybe Archons would help out really nicely here? They go alongside yes. the Zealots, and uh, be very good when they, they die, they, they provide shields for everybody else, and they take so many and hits. And they can just get close to yes. the, uh, the yeah. numbers. They move faster well, than the Zealots, actually. So. We don't see any diadems, but if we did, Archons are kind of almost a hard counter to diadems, because they just outrun it, and yeah. then they cause splash to your own units. They work pretty nice nicely run by. Very nice move to deny that base there. And keeping up with his own, getting a bunch of cannons, but I don't think Wardens are going to do much against the army that B was bringing to the top right now. Yeah, this army over here is going to catch this base. It wasn't really mining that much as a little bit of Vespin here. In fact, it's almost a little bit more painful to lose the minerals that you invested into the static yeah. defense because you're really, really low on money. But this run by with the Zealots doing great work. Some units going to yeah. stream on down. If the Penumbra get activated, then you're basically blowing up your own units anyway. Benno not on a big mineral bank now. He can't, he can't do stuff like that. Every uh, warden he loses is like another zealot and a half. Man, that's right. a lot of dead masons. How many of those died to his own numbers? Yeah, I can only speculate. I, I I don't know. Do friendly fire incidents happen for the Terran arsenal? I feel like those were grossly exaggerated by enemies <laughs> of the Imperium. Yeah, that's right. The lying Protoss. All right, I'll... charging down to low ground here. If he loses all the mad caps, then this gets very difficult. There's a good number of them. The Tectons doing huge damage again. Yeah. And that's going to allow these five remaining zealots to get onto these penumbra. And the beaver not paying attention to this army until just now. He's going to start uh, right clicking oh. more specifically a little bit too late. The Empyreans nice trying their best. The Empyreans, yeah. Yeah. Very, very effective in that fight, surprisingly. Look well, at these sad, sad of Pectons. I know. They're just trying to chip in when they can. But the Empyreans I mean, are dying. Win eventually, but oh boy. Got some wyverns coming into the action as well. Oh, is that how he's going to do it? Is he going to try and wipe the scribes again? Okay, he's finally going to kill it. <laughs> I mean, you want to get behind that, right? Because of the armor. Yeah. Okay. No. I mean, Let's it's see. a good unit against some Tetons, but obviously not against the Imperium. I don't think he's actually going to... Oh, hang on. Might go he after a couple of scribes. Then, oh, no! The Imperium's too slow. It can't catch them. Well, can it? Yeah, a couple more salvos will do it. But still, You're that's a lot of damage. bad. Oh, man. More Minotaurs, though. He does not have an answer for the Minotaurs. They're not going to be... Uh, well, sorry. The Imperium's oh, are not going to no. be cost efficient versus them. 26 Sorry, idle workers. Like, specs like 2,500 minerals, man. He doesn't even care anymore. <laughs> oh my god, he gets the Empyrean. Can he actually win the fight against those Imperials? I think he can. Yeah, they're not even in attack range right now. Well, another Empyrean, though. Yeah, he needs a he lot needs more than that. More like, Zealots! Uh, oh my god. This game's getting out of control, dude. I think both of our players are sparking and sort of like short-circuiting, and they're like, ah, yeah. I gotta get it. I gotta win the game. I gotta get into Acropolis. And then Patriarch's on the way, and they'll be decent against these Minotaurs. Oh, they would actually probably be pretty good if they can actually make connections onto whatever the ground army is. They can probably mm -hmm. help out a lot versus, like, you know, for the Zealots to stay alive no, a little bit longer, gonna right? die. Can it, win that fight. It died. Well, the base is still oh up, Oh, my though. God, he it's figured better. it out. Injection of money yes. incoming. No, not Wait, the gas. Wait, no. Uh, what are you doing? Okay, oh, good, okay. good, good, good. Yeah. He did it. The, the but Nexus is still up, by the way. If Benno can reclaim that position, he's still looking pretty good here, to be honest. Can he get in there? Oh, my God, these are Tectons. They are so useless right now. <laughs> I know, yeah, they're trying their best. It's a good, like, anti Penumbra army he's got there, but it's not good against air. No, oh, are they bullying them? <laughs> I don't Man, know. I feel, I still, honestly, I kind of, I like Benno's position here better. I know that Beaver has a lot of really powerful tech, but the composition has been working out pretty well, and if it's just Minotaurs, you can start to make, you know, the... Obviously, he's made Patriarchs, I don't know where they are. Oh, here they are. Finally coming okay, in. that will take it out. Getting it from behind there, which is what you need to do. Yeah. Oh, there's more. Where are the penumbras at? Oh my god, that's so many madcaps. There it is he so many madcaps, but there's here. also so many zealots, and there's so many uptectons. He does need to take out the madcaps before the zealots commit, though, and so far the uptectons doing an excellent job at that. They just absolutely annihilate anything on the ground. But for uh, advantage they're... helping out, too, they can start cracking shots off. They need to actually attack move, though, and the zealots being held back. Oh now they're going to go ahead and try go. to descend on it. These Minotaurs, though, still staying nice alive for so long. Beaver, yeah, How look at that. Even splashes shots? onto a witness. Dude, what was I saying? These Minotaurs are so good at tanking here. 
It's not really doing much, but it is like holding up the Pro Sony <laughs> a lot. Yeah, yeah, and you definitely need to see more of that. And by the way, that's oh. like, these are the last two Uptectons, man. The last three Uptectons, rather. Huge attack suddenly out of nowhere. Going to take out the Patriarch and finish off the Uptectons. The Zealots ward those Penumbras back, but soon... Okay, hang on. More reinforcements coming from Benno. Oh, no, he's stuck. Oh, oh, he doesn't kill it. No, there's still one yeah. left. But you, listen, Cap's he needs more. going hard on that Nexus. That's right. We're going to take seconds for him to kill it. The Penumbras as well are going to help yes. out. Yes. Charge forward. Attack. I am the boss. He does Once again, yeah. Nexus, yeah. Madcap's obviously superior in rank to Penumbra pilots. I think it died immediately to something. Oh, I'm man. Really sure Come on. I think a scribe like, moved over to it and the splash killed yeah, it or yeah. something. Or maybe oh, no. It was, it was an attack on attack yeah, yeah, yeah. from the high ground. Yeah. Oh, oh no. God, dude. Okay. Oh, wait, no. These ones are vulnerable. Never mind. He pushes it back. Well, I mean, who's really vulnerable? That's right. Oh, man, if he gets these scribes. And who needs to stop this? He has an army to fight this, I think. Yeah, he he's got the one-off Tecton. It's being right-clicked right now, though. Beaver not going to take uh, no for an answer on that one. And the scribes need to get out of there. They will indeed start to transfer over, but a lot of them have already gone down. You know, the Imperians really were adding a lot in those Oh, no. Mistakes Don't do that, me. Beaver. No. Oh, oh, please. No, you're on Phenumbra. Okay, it survives That's with one-off. That's all calculated to you. It's surviving with one HP. <laughs> Oh my god, Benno being pushed back to four bases here, man, and he's probably going to lose that other one because of the high ground. He's going to be back to just his three depleted bases, but Beaver has established three more. Beaver looks like he's taking commanding lead here. The centaurs, man, being the choice here for the Beaver. Ooh, I wonder what that's for, because they're not really super good against any particular unit that uh, Benno has. Yeah, they're pretty good versus stacks, not so much versus, you know, I guess maybe they help thin the herd of the zealots before the... Um, they can really hit onto the penumbra, so if you stack onto them. But first, he's charging oh. in here. Wait, what's. Oh, okay, they're going to try and take out the tech. I mean, yeah, they're pretty good at that. I wonder if just making Gorgons would have been better and more cost effective at this. But hey, he's getting those ancestrals. That's absolutely huge. I don't think he canceled that attack on. This is a huge pickoff because those are the only good units uh, Benno can make. But at the same time, he pounces on those penumbras and annihilates them. Oh my god, but he's got another army. Yeah. Goodbye, this looks like the dying vestiges of this game, and. I don't think uh, wow. Venno's going to be too happy about that one, man. <laughs> Lost, losing yeah. his last mining base, everything else depleted. Yeah, Almost losing his last really impressive too. tier 3 play, man. He was on the ropes for sure, and even has suffered some setbacks in tier 3, but he came back so beautifully, and now he's pushing this deadly army. There's no more good production for Benno. He's counterattacking, though, getting after these masons, and that's doing a lot of damage. Again, could we enter into a base race still? I don't think Benno can get into the Terran main. Oh, those madcaps catching a couple of the Uptecton shots. There's a lot of very low penumbra here. Mm, one Patriarch. Can he face down the Terran <laughs> army? Oh, no, he, he was can't. still there when I looked back, so honestly, I'm yeah. kind of surprised about that. I oh, here comes the penumbra. Yeah, he's got some Imperians. Oh, yeah, no, there's not much left here. Well, Tech the cliff advantage could help him out a little bit. He's going to outrange him by three instead of just one. But yeah, the Minotaurs are here too. And unfortunately, I don't think Benno has what he needs. He never made the Monuments of Sin. He tried to show us something different. I like the all-in on Derelict, even though it didn't yeah. work out. He's going to have to GG. call it GG, dude. Epic gaze. Beaver Absolutely. Into Acropolis. Into the battle lens. Oh, Be my God. Beaver made it in, dude. Well. Crazy game. Insane I was not expecting that to the very end, man. I was not expecting that to be the final one. And Beaver can't believe it either. We're going to speed through his uh, exploration of <laughs> the map. And there it is, dude. He's probably like got <laughs> away from his chair. Please. How many units died? There we oh go. Seven hundred and twenty-three by Beaver, the champ. So I do like think. I, I think you have to say it. I mean, the the stasis and vulnerability bug that was odd, very oddly specific, and I've never seen it before. No idea why it would happen. Uh, that definitely impacted the game to some degree. Uh, but I feel like Benno had some serious chances after that, and even at a point or two, looked like he was in a superior position in terms of the map presence. He might maybe not in terms of composition, but he could have developed from that. What, what's your take, Neblon? Am I being too cope or? No, no, I, I would agree. Honestly, I think uh, at the point that that stasis was happening, Benno was already at a pretty severe disadvantage because even if he wipes that for free and then wipes that other army for free, uh, Beaver's still just going to be making penumbras back in his base and the game would continue in the same manner, I feel like. Um, mm. You know, Benno wasn't able to come up with a composition that really dealt with those penumbras, no matter how much he had or how little he had. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I do think that it's a little bit rough. You always want an unmarred, unblemished way in, yeah, to say, like, oh, there's no questions, no, none at all. 
Uh, and then maybe I don't know if Beaver just uh, didn't see the the question of like should I, should we replay or not? But there was I didn't see an answer. Anyway. Well, maybe I missed. There is one thing to consider here though. If that wasn't the bug and he kept using stasis over and over, it actually would yep. have been really powerful for Benno. So yeah. maybe that did impact it. But hey, they obviously agreed that they'd still sit in the replays. They didn't regame it. Right, yeah, yeah. So, you know, we'll see what ends up happening. And uh, what ends up happening is the beaver into Acropolis. So, GG, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've, and you know what? Even though we find some silly stuff like that as bugs, uh, at least now Benno will know the next time he finds himself in that situation, he can safely stasis the Penumbra. And in fact, every mm. other unit in the game that may have been affected by that bug, because uh, it was really weird that it only affected some units, but it won't affect any of them anymore. G G's on that front. Neblime. Beaver makes it in as a Terran. He makes it in over his nemesis in some ways, yeah. the guy who kicked him out of the first yeah. gauntlet. And it, over My Protoss. Boy Benno, yeah. Again, though, every time I think he's going to pull something off, he doesn't. He was so close. Next Acropolis, man. Next Acropolis. He'll be in. You, you watch. Well, I will say that uh, our player count, our player listing is growing by the moment, by the day. I have a strong sensation that next Acropolis will need more than four groups. And in that situation, I definitely think Benno can make it in despite the sort of rising skill level that we're seeing from all the players. So, you know, if Absolutely. you're one of those people who narrowly missed out on this time around or even it got eliminated earlier than the qualification rounds, all I can say to you is there's a, you know, there's probably more spots in the future, which means you're better odds, which means practice up and stay stay current, man. Stay gaming because absolutely a possibility. And yeah. With all that said, three to two goes the way of the beaver. We got one more qualification series left. Neblime, thank you for joining me for this one. You got any final words for us? Uh, watch out for Penumbra's man. They kill both friend and foe. Massively so. And uh, yeah, that's going to be it for us. GG's.